You know, you can do metabolomics in different ways. You can do by NMR, you can do by mass spec. Mass spec is more powerful in the sense of number of metabolites because uh, it's more sensitive, so you can detect more. But to quantitate is a little bit more cumbersome because you need to standardize the measurements and you need, often you need to have uh, reference compounds to run together with your maybe labeled compounds and stuff. Whereas by NMR you just take uh, any sample, little preparation, really buffering and filtering or centrifuging, something very, very trivial. And then you get the fingerprint which is absolutely reproducible. I mean, it's within 1%. But let's say 1% to be conservative, it's better than any analytical technique. And it's cheap, because you can do it, you can take a single spectrum, and, from, and that spectrum is a fingerprint of the individual at the time you take it. So at the time, the individual may or may have not developed various diseases. And if you have a database which is large enough, you can compare with different uh, fingerprints of different diseases and tell the person, look, you are, you are okay, you are fine, but you are moving towards this or that disease. So go and get a more specific test. Urine is always different and the composition is by and large the same. It is estimated that there are about 2,000 metabolites in urine, some of which are abundant and you can by NMR identify maybe 100 or 150 by mass spec you can do even more, but it's more cumbersome, as I was saying before. So anyway, the big problem is that these signals are never in the same place. So it's very, very difficult to do it automatically. You have to look one by one and say, okay, in this case, maybe this is this one or is that one. And this is really preventing urine to be used as one of the main body fluids because of the difficulty of interpreting the spec. And uh, of course, as a chemist, I thought that, uh, well, if signals move, there must be a reason. And the reason is a chemical reason. So signals move because depending on the composition of urine, there are interactions among metabolites that make them appear in slightly different places in the spectrum. So we started modeling these interactions among all possible metabolites, not 2,000, but uh, a few tens, so maybe 100. And we start seeing patterns and we start seeing that, yes, we can predict where that metabolite will be in that particular sample. And this opens the way to so really automated assignment. So, something that we have discussed uh, last year a lot, and then finally we made a small agreement with Giotto. So, I have a postdoc in Giotto who's uh, actually dedicated to this, and uh, I'm really confident that within less than a year we will have a very powerful way to interpret urine. And uh, we make sure that we keep absolutely in line with Brucher's recommendations because we, we believe that uh, if we are not standardized in a particular instrument in the first place we can never achieve what we would like to achieve in terms of uh, screening broad numbers of people and so on and so forth. So I think that's an absolute must.